Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another installment of Jammore Interviews. I'm your host, Josh, a.k.a. Jammore. Today, I'll be interviewing a person who is impaired in shows such as Arrow, Plus World, and has done video games such as Apex Legends, Injustice 2, and so much more. Can I please get a rounding round of applause for the amazing, the talented, the humble Arrow Trail? Sorry, I was being lame. Uh, I was like, I can do this from my laptop. Nope, no, it can't. Can't oh my god. <laughs> You're fine. It's okay. I've had multiple people like be like, hey Joshua, can I do this on the computer or laptop? I'm like, no, Instagram is trash. I'm sorry. Forget. <laughs> well, how are you doing today? I'm doing all right. We're we're you know a little tense over here given we have a an interesting verdict about to come in. I'm sure you've heard so. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, we're we we're over I, I, I didn't even know. And I'm like, I gotta get out of here. I'm so glad you're here, but before I get into the questions, I would just like to say it's an absolute honor and a privilege to be able to be speaking to you and to be able to bring you on. I'm a huge fan of your work, and I'm really glad to be able to speak to you and bring you on. I just really hope you have an amazing time here, and thank you so much. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure. Now, for my audience, could you do some of the, could you name some of the characters you do and the voices associated with those characters? <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> I had a feeling questions um yes let's see uh i was well i'm bangalore in apex legends and it's a lot of i'm actually wearing i'm cold but i'm wearing it so yeah. um <laughs> and uh goodness gracious i'm sapphire obviously in steven universe i'm also pat Baresha and in, in steven universe i am a cheetah in many a thing and injustice too among them um and Lego Batman 3, and uh, I'm Emily, uh, the Empress Emily Caldwin in Dishonored 2. I am uh, the female witch doctor in Diablo 3. I am, oh gosh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> There's many more. Oh gosh, I was in um, most recently, oh, goodness gracious, Star Wars Squadrons as, uh, as Grace. Um, uh, Captain, you really want me to <laughs> how many more? Oh, um, no, you're good, yeah. <laughs> Captain Underpants, Keisha in the original Magic School Bus cartoon when I was 12. Um, yeah, yeah, I was young. I was a little tiny, tiny person. <laughs> <laughs> some cool things I found out about you uh, while researching some questions to ask is that your middle name means to give thanks and uh, how do you pronounce that because i was gonna pronounce it but i was like no i'm not gonna try <laughs> <laughs> oh right and yes my last name is pronounced luttrell so you know there you go it's oh, but you do uh, i feel bad now i messed up I do it bad. in your heart <laughs> but uh yeah it's uh shukrani it's it's phonetic actually so that's pretty that's much more straightforward than my last name. Um, yeah, and my mom, my mom's from Tanzania, so uh, as then therefore is part of me and all my sisters, and we all have Swahili middle names because of that. So, um, so yeah, mine was to give thanks because you know, little known fact, I was an emergency C-section, so basically I almost <laughs> took my mother's life on my own at the same time. But we made it, and therefore she gives yeah, thanks yeah. for the success of of that uh, day. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I couldn't imagine all yeah. that was going on in the room and the, and the, um, the energy. It's not the coming room. out, guys. We're going to have to go in, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. Another cool thing was that I found that you were born in Toronto, Canada. Canada. Why did I say it like that? Canada. You, with uh, you know, that works. <laughs> we all know what you mean. We all know. I know what you mean. <laughs> right. With three siblings. So what was that like? Um... I, it was wonderful. I mean, I had a, a great time growing up in Toronto. It's, uh, of course, people from Canada are always criticizing my pronunciation. It's actually, if you're in, from there, you're supposed to say it, Toronto, Toronto. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it was wonderful. I'm the youngest of, of four. So my sisters are all 10, 11, and 13 years older than me. I don't know if that's bad to say. Um, <laughs> but I was, you know, I was very, I was like the tiny, annoying, you know, youngest sibling who ran around and also was like in TV and, and film and, 
cartoons and stuff so i was probably very annoying i think they you know they loved me they love me still but uh <laughs> but yeah canada was very different you know i mean i saw a lot of u.s stuff on tv but you know when i actually finally moved to la when i was 16 it was a bit of a bit of culture shock i could imagine what that move is like i mean me moving from new york to georgia was like a complete oh my gosh. like yeah it was a complete Whoa. culture change, you know <laughs> Everything down here is so quiet and people are in yeah. by a certain time and then New York is like, we're up 24 seven, we're going, we're all yeah. over the place, but we're moving, we're back and forth. And Where in Georgia? Our... And from New York? Um, outside of Atlanta. Yeah, I was in Jamaica, uh, Jamaica, Queens, New York. Okay. And then to Atlanta. Okay. So you city to city. Okay. Not too bad. Right. <laughs> but but it, it is, it's very much a difference and getting used yeah. to that. So. Yeah. Have you been to any conventions around Georgia or, or Atlanta or New York? No, I haven't been to. I'm like thinking there's like Dragon Con, right? Which I know I haven't been to. Gosh darn it. Well, for, forgive me if I've forgotten a convention I've been to. I've been to one in uh, like, not Birmingham. Where was it? Mobile, Alabama. <laughs> that was, you know, yeah. I didn't ever expect I would go there, but I did go there and I had a wonderful time. In fact, there were some lovely restaurants and some great folks. Um, but no, I've never... I've never been to Georgia for a convention. I've been to Georgia quite a bit, actually. I actually dated somebody in Georgia and spent a lot of time flying back and forth to Atlanta. So, so that's another little known fact. This is what you get on Instagram Live, folks. <laughs> I love that. I, I, love, I love getting all that cool stuff and little details that I didn't even know about. That's why I love doing this. You learn people's stories and where they're from and just how they got to the place where they're at. And it's just really so dope to learn and do all that stuff. So but, um, dope. One qu uh, my first question to you is, what is one childhood memory that you would say defines your childhood perfectly? Ooh. First time I've ever Ooh. asked that question. <laughs> that's a really interesting question that can define my whole childhood. That would be, that's difficult. It's funny, the first thing that that comes to mind, which almost can't be a memory at this point because my first job was on a, a Pampers commercial when I was two. So kind of like, yeah, like I, I know that I really enjoyed myself. I have like a vague recollection of just running around, you know, half naked in a diaper and climbing on like wooden jungle gyms and things. And, <laughs> And I know I had a wonderful time and there was a lot of that like on the various sets that I was on when I was a kid. So, so that, I guess, I hear some cheering out there. I, I have a feeling uh, the verdict went a certain way, so. <laughs> oh gosh, I wanna, I, uh, I can't do that. We'll just keep going, we'll just keep going. Okay. No, I, 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 think, I think everything's fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to know that justice was served and, and definitely going to be hearing about that at school tomorrow. <sighs> Goodness. That's really cool. That I, I was looking in that I looked that you were in those commercials. And I was like, that's really cool that you were in this industry from like a very young age, like two years old. That must have been like crazy to just like swing right into it, you know, and just start all that awesome stuff. And it when was... you said that you were in the magic school bus when you were 12 years yeah. old, I was like, what? That's insane. That's really so dope. Um, <laughs> How old did you think I was? 20? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> that make me about 59 right now. Like, what are we talking about? <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but with you being in the industry at such a young age, what was the goal that you had in your mind growing up that you would be doing? Um, I don't know that I had a goal, you know, I mean, like being ultimately, obviously, if you're in the industry at the age of two, like you didn't really choose that. So at that age, I, you know, it was just something I was doing, you know, that was fun. Um, and I did enjoy it when I first started doing it. And then, you know, eventually I realized that it was a job. And then that was weird at like about the age of nine. <laughs> and I was like, that's strange. Are these people not my friends, like these older folks that I hang out with sometimes. Um, yeah, I mean, I knew it was a job because I knew I earned money and, you know, could like buy a Super Nintendo if I wanted or something. But like, I didn't, 
you know, quite get it. So, you know, it took some time. It took me, you know, in my like early 20s, like leaning back a little bit from the business before I really dialed into what I wanted to do with it. And, um, you know, came to really love the art of it much more so than, you know, as, as you know, like as a kid, you, you're, uh, there are some phenomenal child actors. I don't want to, you know, be whatever, self-deprecating. I don't think I was bad, but I don't think I was, you know, I'm not, uh, who am I? Like, uh, goodness gracious, what is her name? Eleven, what is her name? Uh, Bobby Mary Brown. Bobby Brown. Thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you. Look at that <laughs> yeah, I mean, who I think is does like extraordinary work at her young age. And there are a lot of kids who do that sort of thing. And I think really know. And I think her parents are maybe in the industry or they uh, don't quote me. I'm not sure. But um, so, yeah, so only later did I did I come to sort of to a kind of a goal, even though I don't necessarily think that goals in and of themselves are as meaningful as some other things. I think what I want to do with it is to positively impact people, is to, uh, you know, have the opportunity to, whether it's a story that I write or create or, or something that I've given, I'm given the opportunity to, to voice or to play on camera, be involved in stories that really change people's perspectives and use my, you know, talent and artistry to be able to uh, convey messages that you can't get to people without accessing them emotionally, which, you know, happens most often in art. Yeah, the, I, got, I was uh, talking to someone about this, uh, like just the entertainment industry as a whole is just so important to society and humanity and just has like such a huge grasp on people. Like there's been tons of things that I've like read or played video games or watched that have really like grounded me and have helped form who I am and saved me. I, I once said that there was this cartoon uh, called Chowder back on Cartoon Network. And I told uh, uh, Steve Bloom, who I was speaking to, I told him that shows the reason I have my sense of humor because I watch that show daily. And you know, like stuff like that helps resonate with you and like makes you the person who makes you who you are, I would say. Yeah, I totally hear that. I mean, I've definitely had those experiences with art in my life where, you know, I've been either very sad or not quite understanding one thing or another and I watch a you know beautiful performance or a really beautifully written piece of something and it uh, shifts my perspective it just like redefines how I look at the world around me which I think is a really you know miraculous thing to do it doesn't happen with every work of art but it, it might for one person who watches it so yeah I must be so amazing to just like you know, just seeing all these people, and we're of course going to talk about like Apex Legends. Uh, we're going to get into that fandom and just how crazy that is. But I mean, they just announced that uh, Valkyrie's coming, uh, the girl uh, with the jetpack, which I thought was really cool. How did voice acting get introduced into your life? So that's an interesting thing for me too, because when I, as I mentioned, you know, when I lean back a little bit from the business itself in in my early twenties, I. I, you know, ended up working for some time at a bookstore and, uh, you know, did a lot of reading and uh, kind of reassessing of things. And during that, like, I never completely backed out. I just was a little bit less committed and a little bit less, like, going for all the things. And at that time, the voice stuff just sort of took off, I guess, you know, because it was less of a time commitment. It was less, I just was like, yeah, okay, you could kind of knock off an audition. Well, eventually you could in your house, um, <laughs> you know, under covers, you know, with your cell phone. Um, and then if they liked you, you know, you, it's like a four hour session. Anyway, so during that time, I ended up doing quite a few voice things, which I didn't expect and doing voice, uh, which is this very sort of stripped down in a way version of of performance you know it's very it's just you and the director sorry i'm sorry my friend called me and like cut off the instagram i'm so sorry oh my god no I'm i didn't so hear it on this <laughs> i was like wait did you miss it all I so no mad? i heard you i'm click, sorry click, it's just click, my click, friend click. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I thought I had my phone on Do Not Disturb. Text like all day right now, just like text, 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 mostly because of what's going on in the world. But um, 
Yeah, so the voice stuff reminded me what I love about acting, basically, because it was just so, like, the simple, the simplicity of it, you know, of just kind of being in a booth and having it just be your performance only and the director giving you a sense of the world, um, you know, and it's not all the wardrobe and the makeup and the travel and the things and the, you know, lighting and the hurry up and wait. And it, it's none of that. It's just, just the performance. So because of that, I was like, oh, uh, Okay, yeah, this is what I like. I do like this. This is good. This is fun. So, yeah, yeah. so yes, it was just, it was basically in that time when I was kind of taking it easy and not being as directed that like, funnily enough, my voiceover career took off and wonderful for me because obviously during this last year when we've all sort of, you know, been wondering like, what do we do and what, it's worked out okay because I've been able to, I just, you know, I bought this thing behind me so I can work from home, you know, and was able to work um, through this really sort of difficult time, um, which wouldn't necessarily have been the case if I had been entirely relying on like the on-camera world. So having, you know, all elements of, of being an actor going at the same time is, you know, wonderful and helpful and enriching in, in many different ways. Yeah, that's what I hear a lot of when I look into like doing voiceover because I am interested. A lot of uh, VAs talk about how it's it's important to be involved in like drama or like theater or like at least have some sort of acting background to help like make you a really great voice uh, artist, you know, and be really great in this industry to so just have that background. And I always find it interesting because people come from all types of different backgrounds in, in the VA industry. Like uh, D. Bradley Baker wasn't an actor. He was just kind of did it to do it, you know? And he's been like, of course, like one of the biggest voice actors of all time. I but love it, 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 <laughs> You got to work with him? Oh yeah. You get to work with a lot of a lot of folks when you swim around in this in this world a bit. I think, well, I think it was the last I saw him was on Oh goodness, it's so difficult. I'm never entirely sure if that was actually, but I believe it was Victor and Valentino. Again, don't quote me, but I believe that that's the cartoon. Anyway, uh, he's lovely and I've worked with him before and it's a, a joy, but yes, yeah. People stumble into it. People, you know, approach it very directedly. I have people who in my life who are like, this is the only thing I want to do. I'm like, oh, wow, okay, wow, yeah. I mean, for me, I also kind of, in a way, stumbled into it. I mean, I did one very significant show when I was a kid and then didn't really do much voice for many years until like my 20s. Wow. And now we're gonna talk about, because people are in the comments who want me to go in there. We're gonna talk about Apex Legends. The thing I found cool about you was that you have been a part of Apex since its launch. You were a part of the original Legends that came with yeah. all of it. So from someone who's been in this since the beginning, how has it been to see the growth of this franchise? Obviously, like I just said, they just added, announced Valkyrie is coming. So how does it feel? Oh my goodness. Uh, it's, I like, honestly haven't entirely digested it. I don't really know how you can. <laughs> When they're like, we have however many millions of, I'm like, what? That's not, I remember, you know, like, okay, so I recorded the audition for it again, like in my house on my cell phone, you know, and it seemed like, you know, I, I read the description of the character. I was like, okay, this feels, the, you know, and I fell into a kind of voice that I thought would suit it well. Um yeah and then they called me in for a call back at the studio and you know that went well it was lovely the people there were really friendly and delightful you know it just felt like any other job with lovely folks in the industry uh you know and then i booked it and i was like great okay cool went in for a couple sessions great okay you know and then the day it dropped i was like what's happening <laughs> you know exploded almost immediately oh oh i see you're doing the hands you did the hands. <laughs> oh, oh no, I said you cut off for a little bit. But yeah, did I, I, don't know I, if that's did I cut off or did you cut off? Was it me? I, okay. <laughs> it might have... Yeah, but no, uh, I, I know you. what you were saying was um, that you was unexpected to see the takeoff of the, the oh. game. Totally. I was completely blown away by it, that it, it got that many, you know, unique players so soon. And, you know, and people that were reaching out to me on social media, that was shocking. It was the same thing that happened 
but in a different way when when the first episode of, of Steven Universe with Sapphire in it landed and I was like out one night. I was like at a bar with a friend. And <laughs> my phone just kept pinging and I was like, why? What's happening? <laughs> oh, okay, that show aired. That's nice. Okay. You know, but I just didn't expect it. So it's hard. It's like, I'm not hard. It's to digest it. Like, you, I don't think you ever really digest something when it, what something you do is such a success because once it gets past a certain amount of people, even, you know, like I have like a modest, like 19,000 followers, you know, on my social media accounts. And it's like, once it gets beyond a, like a few thousand, it's hard to conceptualize that they're like, I can only imagine what like, I don't even know, like a Lady Gaga or something with their millions. Like you can't actually digest the information past a certain point. It's just there and you respond to individuals, you know, as best you can. And then the, beyond that, it's great. But like, my gosh, the fan art is like stunning. And just the response is amazing. And the writers on the show are so phenomenal. Like just, I'm always blown away by these you know, stories from the Outlands and the trail, like, it's just like, I'm, I almost, I pretty much am either moved to a damp eye or like to actual tears every time. <laughs> and I'm like, damn it, you guys, every time. Yeah. <laughs> That's what makes Apex so cool and me. And what I've always liked about it is the, it's just how they made it personal. You know, how they make the characters characters. It's not like other battle royales where it's just like, oh, you're this person with like a skin or and you're just running around right. shooting people up. Bangle right. has a story. Mirage has a story. All these characters have stories that makes them so compelling. And I'm just like you. I mean, I know for a person who's in it, you can only imagine what it's like to be me, a fan to see all the ways they've taken this story. And I remember seeing the, um, which one was it? The, the, I think it was Pathfinder was like wearing like a detective, uh, did you see that one? He was like in a detective thing, he was like running away and he like, it was revealed he saw like somebody get killed. I, I, I've been kept up with all of Tears. Tears. <laughs> that was such a, yeah, when Pathfinder like died at the end, I was like, what? Right. Yeah. yeah, it's just so cool to see what they do. And recently, the, the Valkyrie thing like blew me away. And then I'm listening to some of the stories from the Outlands, and it's just building. And I'm, I I just love it. I mean, this this has been perfect. And for me personally, as someone who is a big fan of story, like if your game doesn't have like a campaign, at least something, I'm not really interested. That's just me though. I know a lot of people are like, no, I'm, bad. I'm the same. Yeah. yeah, I know a lot of my friends are like. Multiplayer, multiplayer, but it's like I want that story. I want to feel for this character. I want to get a sense or, or a scope of this world. Like I want to feel it all. And that's I'm just that's someone who loves stories and telling stories and listening to stories. Perfect for me. So I'm really glad that they're keeping it going. Um, Great. What story element about Bangalore makes her so intriguing? Hmm. What story element or what element of, of her herself? We can go both. We can say both. We can do both. I mean, I think obviously her... I mean, there's... I would say, like, well, her brother, obviously. The loss of her brother um, makes her... I mean, she has... But so I'll start with that. That is a story element. Um, the loss of her brother, because there is, you know, a grief and a confusion and, you know, a rage sort of simmering beneath the surface about that, that is, it remains unresolved um, for her. So, you know, always if there's something that is underneath the surface of anybody, you know, that's that's gonna be intriguing. Uh, you know, I love mystery in a story and in a person. Um, so, so I would say from a story perspective, I mean that, you know, she's not just, I mean, and I'm, I'm sure she's experienced other traumas and other uh, redirects in her life that have sort of led to this, this place she's at right now. Um, and then I think the fact that she's a very private person, you know, uh, makes her 
you know, doubly intriguing. Like there isn't, she's not sharing her self with just anybody, you know? So it's always uh, fun or uh, just, it's hard not to want to draw that person out. I was uh, then speaking of like being a private person. I uh, before I did this interview, I watched the uh, uh, Outlands little thing. It was between Bangalore and Wrath, and they got a little thing going. Like like she um, grabbed the knife, and Wrath was like, "Hey, let me let me look at this." And Bang was like, "Come on, like nah. She like banged her against the locker and, and grabbed her knife bag. And my question to you was, do you think that they'll become friendly as the story goes along? Or do you think this is sort of like, they really have bad blood with one another? Well, it's interesting, because I don't really feel like they do have bad blood necessarily. I just think that Bangalore was incredibly triggered uh, in that moment. Uh, and I think it's difficult for her when triggered to go to a soft place. <laughs> you know, so I, I actually think that they're on relatively good terms, you know, but that's my take as an actor. The writers may have their own and, and may evolve it differently. But at least for me in that moment, I didn't feel like I was um, coming at her from a place of hatred. Just, I was like, you know, give me my freaking knife. <laughs> That's not yours to touch. It's nobody's to touch, you know. Yeah, I, I get what it's like to be very protective over stuff from people. I mean, I think that's with everyone though. Like when you have something like really special and prized to you, you don't want anyone touching it. Like that, that yeah. that's my thing. Like back away, like go away. Like this is my private thing that you're like intruding on. And yeah. I completely, I completely get that. So I, I wouldn't necessarily say they have like bad, bad blood, but I, it was, you're right. Like it was a moment. They had a moment. The before. moment. Yeah. You, getting into a space that was very special to me. And I don't share those, those spaces with people uh, readily. Right. Now, it's no secret that these characters take place in the Titanfall universe. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to, people want a Titanfall game. I want one because Titanfall 2 was freaking amazing. I remember when there, when um, I was watching this channel for a little bit and there were rumors that there was a Titanfall 3 game going to be announced, but of course it was Apex Legends because some people thought it was Titanfall 3 because of the way it was being described. But it, yeah, it turned out to be Apex Legends. And I was wondering, have you heard anything about the Titanfall 3, maybe? Even if I had, I couldn't say. <laughs> That's true. That is true. I'm, I'm familiar with the world of NDAs. So uh, I... Eves, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Very familiar with that. But if they were to make a Titanfall 3, because there's a lot of lore with Bangalore. Of course, she's a part of um, mm. ICM, right? Uh, the, the, the team that she's a part of. Okay. Uh, say it again. IMC. IMC, yes. Sorry, I got the last two letters mixed up. IMC is I part of the time. Creative management, a very successful talent agency. <laughs> <laughs> you know more than me. I, I, you know way more than me when it comes to this type of stuff. So. <laughs> but do you, if they were to make a time fall through, because there's so much lore with that character, of course, they referenced uh, a war that had gone on that she was a part of in the final days. And of course the planet that she comes from, there's a lot going on there. Do yeah. you hope that they save that for Titanfall 3 or would you be okay if they uh, revealed it at, in those little story reels? Um, obviously I'd be happy for, you know, Bangalore's story to evolve over as long as she, you know, <laughs> Maybe with us. I mean, we are all mortal, right? But uh, so it would be really cool if they evolved her story into a, a Titanfall 3. Um, but I mean, you know, as with all stories, you know, whenever it, is, it, it begs to be told, it, it should be told. So if it feels organic for it to, for whatever, more of her to come out in the world of Apex, then I, I would be very pleased with that. And if there is more to be told in a Titanfall 3, then I would, I, yeah, that'd be amazing. Do you do the mocap for her? Cause I was gonna say it looks a little bit, do you do the mocap? 
I do do mocap. I don't do mocap for her, and I, I suspect it's because I'm freaking tiny. <laughs> Okay. It's funny, it ended up being a friend of mine who I was like, we didn't know either one of us were doing the same, you know, and she, because she's a little bit taller than me, and I, I was like, okay, this makes so much sense, because I, but yeah, I'm like, I'm small, I'm like five, three and three quarters, and like, you know, not even, oh yeah, I'm five, three and three quarters, and about like 110, <laughs> I'm small. <laughs> Why? This is, no. No, that's not a bad thing. It's just like, that's, <laughs> that's crazy to think about because I remember looking up, I don't know. I just have like a vision of people and so like Roger Craig Smith, I thought was really tall. I thought he was like six foot and is actually like shorter than me. Like he's like, like right here, like under, he's like right under the- How tall are you? Are you going to your waist? Where is he? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> Where do yeah. I can't see your hand? It's like I'm under. sorry, yeah, like right here, like underneath the arm. Seriously, how tall are you? I'm almost six foot. Okay. Almost there. So cool. very close. I think I, I think when I graduate, I like get this like magical boost to my height, and I'll be six <laughs> feet, and I'll be very happy. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't. It's just really crazy when I find out people because I, I thought you I personally thought you would be like five seven like like five seven uh, no no and I can tell you that's what my wife thought before she went on our first date together she was like I thought you'd be bigger I'm like I don't know <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. amazing but we, <laughs> we we love people the way they are and that is amazing it makes the world a beautiful unique place so yeah yeah, and pocket size, guys. You know, something. Oh, I can't. I can't. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> for Apex Legends, there's always everything being new added, and we heard for the uh, season nine that fans of Titanfall are going to be very pleased. And I know you can't talk about a lot that's coming out, of course, NDAs and stuff like that. But what do you hope they add next? Um, I would, I hope that they add more, um, solo mode. What was that? I said solo mode. Please add solo mode. I'm so tired. Um, please add solo mode. If any, if Respawn is watching Erica talk, add solo mode. I'm so, I'm sorry to cut you off, but please. <laughs> You're like, dude, I can't control that. Do you know how many people tweet that stuff at us? I'm like, I'm I'm, yeah, I was about to say, you guys probably get like five million messages talking about some ass solo mode. Guys, I can't do anything. Okay. You're like, what Erica wants to say is, ass solo mode. Is that what you're trying to get? Ass solo mode. Is that? Yeah, that's what I was trying to do, like a little like that, but, but I guess it didn't work out. <laughs> I guess it didn't work out. Uh, yeah, I don't know, more, I want to, I, obviously I want to have more of what's going on with Bangalore come out, and maybe more stuff that's personal, not just from the past, but into the future, you know. That's all I'll say. There's, there's always adding something new that really intrigues me, and I'm really excited to see what Valkyrie adds to the universe, to each and every character, and yours too, like, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, of course, they got an amazing actress as the voice for her, as Valkyrie. Uh, and um, I'm really excited to see how she interacts with this universe. And because she's, you know, Cam and Ben did a oh, fantastic job. Where is it? I, I don't want to get off the screen, but Ben's a really nice dude. He. Oh, oh like, hold on. He's right here. And I just. I just. I, there it is. Here we go. What? Here we go. What? He sent me this a while ago as a nice oh, little thing. Beautiful. Yeah, I have to, I have to put that safe because I might destroy it. I'm very known to destroy stuff. <laughs> Just a bit of tea on it by accident. Some of your southern oh, tea. I've done that so many times. Oh gosh, you'd be surprised if times I've done that. But I love Apex. And I'm really glad that you're a part of the. I love Bangalore. I played as Bangalore like a lot when the first game came out. I would be used her like all the time. Like I would, I was only her and Bloodhound are the two people I. Oh, I love. Most. I love it. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm cheap. 
so I haven't gotten any new characters. I have to buy fuse. <laughs> Not to get to Madam Chief, but I have to get some of the new legends. Yeah, it's especially in this day and age. It's important. All right. So, but I'm I, I'm really excited to see what they do, and they keep teasing a lot of Titanfall stuff. So, crossing would get like wall jumping or something, or I don't think they could add Titans because I feel like that'd be too much. You know what I mean? I I, I don't think they could do that in a but map. I, we'll see. We'll see. So. But um, one th another thing my friends were like begging me to talk to you about was your role in Steven Universe. Because my funny story, my little brother watches yeah. that show every day. I go in the living room and I will look and it's just Steven Universe. And he watched it for like, binged it and watched it like five times. And he loves that show. Yeah. So and then my friend was like, oh my God, you're talking to Sapphire. I'm losing my mind. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I, I mean, I've, I watched Steven Universe, but I, I don't think I got to your part of when you were introduced into the show, but I'm really glad that people love your character. People love your character so much. So how has Sapphire changed your life or how, what has that character brought out of you? Uh, um, Sapphire has changed my life because it's it sort of allowed me to play a character that is I mean, you know, she's a gem, so she isn't necessarily, like, gendered per se, but it was the first character that I played that uh, can be considered, at least from a human standpoint, a, a part of the LGBTQIA universe. Um, and so it's changed my life in that regard because I, you know, so obviously I have a wife, so there's that, but it's, it's wonderful to be sort of a, a part of the imagination of a universe that embraces those kinds of things, you know, people like myself and so on. Uh, so it's changed my life in that regard. And, and, and also, you know, the fact that I believe it was the first wedding, like LGBTQIA wedding, on a cartoon I again I don't know see I need to have like a list of stats when I do these interviews but I believe that so I mean it's pretty you know revolutionary and wonderful and um and just the show itself um you know I didn't know I wasn't clear on the the depths of it when I first started working on it you know and as I continued I was like wow this show is pretty for not like you know I've watched it and cried again you might think I'm an e easy mark but no it's <laughs> these are genuinely moving things I'm crying at people um and uh yeah it's just like really dialed into like all the struggles that we all have experienced either when we were, were teenagers or just as human beings you know I remember watching this one episode where Stephen was just waiting for uh, I believe it was Connie to call him. It would have been, um, and it was just right. Yeah. And it was yeah. everyone else was calling him, <laughs> but Connie. And I was like, it was so. I was like, this is the most relatable stuff. Like when I and it was like the most benign, like obnoxious phone calls too. Like I feel like there was a promotion, you know, or something, something equivalent to all those student loan calls everybody gets these days. <laughs> Yeah, I remember walking in on my brother watching that episode, and I never watched, I haven't watched Steven Universe in a little bit, and I was, yeah. like, glued to the screen. I was like, please call Steven back. I'm kind of feeling bad now. Please call him back. Yeah. I was feeling so bad. I was like, yeah. oh, my God. <laughs> I felt so bad for that kid. Because it's like, that is relatable. Like, you're just waiting for that one person, you're waiting for that one text message from that person, and then it's like, so another friend or or you're getting a, a youtube notification when your phone starts to buzz up and then it's a youtube notification yeah. and they have no relevance to your life at all another friend because you're like well i guess i'm happy to hear from you and you make you get like guilt anger because <laughs> like, you're like ah, man, perfect way to describe it <laughs> but i love you and just no <laughs> not, not, right now, not right now <laughs> not right now not right now <laughs> Another massive franchise you're part of is obviously Star Wars. Uh, you're a part of Star Wars universe now. How does that feel to be a part of like a franchise that's now going on 50 years plus? Oh my gosh, I love it. <laughs> we uh, over here sat down and I, you, my wife hadn't seen any of them. So I was made her watch the whole thing. We, we've also now started like the Marvel Cinematic Universe stuff too, because we, 
<laughs> have you watched Falcon and Winter Soldier? House, mostly because of me. Um, what? Have you watched Falcon and Winter Soldier yet? No, because we haven't. Here's the problem. So we watched WandaVision, but we haven't finished watching all the Marvel Marvel movies. So now we've been spoiled for like freaking Last Avengers movies. It's very frustrating. I didn't want to see the Last Avengers movies because I'm like going totally off topic, but because I hadn't seen some of the lead up, some of the other, you know, specific superhero movies. Like I've seen some of them, but like all over the place. So, you know, so now we're trying to get to that, but that's all like why I can't watch another show because it's gonna spoil so much of the stuff until I've done like the 23, I think it is, like full 23 yeah, movies. Yeah. But, but yeah, we did the Star Wars everything in our house and that was, a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. We're we're deep into uh, Star Trek: The Next Generation now because I'm trying to fully nerdify my my poor unsuspecting wife. She's, a, <laughs> she's fully addicted to it. She's like, "Are we watching it for dinner now?" I'm like, uh huh. Yeah, that's that's what we watch every night. <laughs> that's so cool. That's awesome. That's really dope. Uh, my my mom is a huge Star Trek fan. I don't like Star Trek, but I, I people are gonna can, don't cancel me. But I don't like Star Trek. I think it's boring. I love me some Star Wars, though. <laughs> no! Okay, well, you have to come over to my house. We'll sit you down on the couch, and you're going to watch some Star Trek The Next Generation. Is what's going to happen. They think you don't understand. You think I you don't think I do either. Because my mom will literally, I will walk in her room, like, for a second while I have to, like, go pick something up that I left or something. And I look, and it's freaking Patrick Stewart and, and, and uh, Captain Kirk and Spock. And I'm like... Oh, okay, I'm glad you love it. The only thing I do like yeah. is the movies with Chris Pine in it. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> what? You don't like the movies? Okay, all right. You got it. Here's the thing. It's hard to have an easy end to a Star Trek. You, Because there's too much. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of relationships. And there's like a lot of... Uh, like the sort of lore of it and like the world of it is very specific so, so like until you've fallen in love with that it's hard to get into because there's a there's like there's so many different shows there's a lot of different i watched next generation with my dad when i was a kid like here and there i didn't see every episode um yeah so you know there's a tie there my dad like passed away six seven, six years ago um and so it's like a very thank you homey wonderful you know feeling to me in a weird way like patrick stewart kind of reminds me of my dad <laughs> yeah. um so you know there's some personal elements to that um and i just yeah i find it i find the chemistry with the cast really wonderful and i i mean i'm like fully a star trek evangelist i'm like the sort of person that will be like i didn't even see the original show so there are people out there who would be like no you don't know but i i just love that version of a human future, you know, like as we now sit on the precipice of like so many horrifying things, not to get bleak here, but you know, and the planet and, you know, climate change and just things that we're doing and like injustices in the world, you know, it's wonderful to sort of have this imagined future that, you know, Gene Roddenberry came up with of like human beings who have evolved past you know, there was a third world war apparently in that universe and we've learned, we've learned better. Everybody's provided for in the world of Star Trek. <laughs> There's no hunger because everyone has replicators or whatever, you know, like you don't ever have to want for food or shelter or what have you. So, you know, we now are just exploring the universe, which I think is pretty rad, you know, <laughs> as things go. So it's like, yeah, the idea of like having a future where everybody is provided for and they can just kind of decide how they want to contribute, I think is pretty extraordinary. I will stop evangelizing now. Carry on. No, you know <laughs> what? Because of you, I will try Star Trek again. I will try the show <laughs> just because I, would, I will give it a start, chance. Start the beginning of Next Generation. It's on Netflix right now. And see how you feel. <laughs> All right. Well, now we're going to get to the fun part of my interview. It's called Weird and Wacky. We have okay. five minutes to answer a series of random and wacky questions. We okay. We have a record of 15 questions, although the current okay. current champion is Simon Norfleet with a record of 14 questions answered. Do you think you'd be Simon? <laughs> no idea. Let's see. Let's see. Let's, let's have a go at it. <laughs> All right. I'm about to start the timer okay. in three, 
two, one. Longest time period without taking a shower. Uh, yeah. Weirdest food you've ever eaten. Oh, uh, I don't know. Eggplant. I hate eggplant. <laughs> a movie that you loved growing up. Oh, God. Pretty Woman. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Would you rather eat bees or spiders? Oh, uh, bees? A superpower you wish you had in real life. Uh, careful! Controlling the weather. Least favorite movie. Least favorite movie. Oh gosh, I was just recommended. I okay, recently a movie called The Handmaiden. It's not that it's a bad movie. Sorry, Erica Ishii. I just we watched it that night, and I just what, like I dreamt about it for two nights. It was horrifying. Okay, here we go. <laughs> a song that you can't stand. What I can't stand? What that I can't stand? <laughs> a song that you can't stand. I still don't hear you. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, apologize to the children. All right. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, Erica, you got a, a record of seven questions, and although you didn't beat Simon, you have gotten into the average. So oh, for crying out loud. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> this is so much fun. It's a great segment. I like it. I feel like I'm going to laugh cry in a second. Keep going. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no, you're fine. And now I'm going to go to my final question. And Erica, I would just like to say I've had so much fun and I have a ton of love and respect and just like, just you're just awesome. And I've just really enjoyed getting to know you more from this interview and just thank you so much and sending much love and hugs your way. And it's really awesome to get to know more about the roles you did. It's just so cool. So I really hope you've enjoyed your time here. And thank you so much for taking your time out of your day to do this. And I'm running out of breath. So. <laughs> My final question is, what would your current message to the world be during these current times that we live in? Obviously, we live in a global pandemic, pandemic right now. Laws are being changed. Things are happening around the world. What would you say to people who are in fear and in need of a little hope? Mm. Um, goodness, in need of a little hope. I would say that hope lives in you <laughs> and uh, that you know, the closest you can get to who you are in any given moment, in your days, in your weeks, in your months, at your work, at your job, with your friends, in every moment, you know, like let go of the anxiety and be yourself. Um, that is what will bring the rest of the world and those around you the hope that we all need. Couldn't agree more. Um, all right, guys, unless you have any fan questions, I'm gonna look right here to someone left the what did that say? I can't read that I don't like this uh <laughs> you're the her head now this is good oh there we go that's not a question but it is a very true statement you are the best and I completely you are agree. the best all right guys um one quick thing before I get into the plug zone for you can you say one line in the voice of Bang? um yeah and let's see clips are what Siv is using their hair this is called a magazine. That's so cool. So <laughs> cool. Uh, Erica, anything you want to plug before we head off? Oh, goodness. Uh, yeah, I'm, I have a show called uh, David Makes Man that I just shot over the pandemic. Miracle in Florida. Um, and it's already, the first season of it is already out that I, that I wasn't in. It's a beautifully done series, though. So I recommend that you watch that on HBO Max and then watch for me in season two, which I think is coming up in the summer. All right, guys, and you guys find me Stuff here. that I can say, which, like, I'm nda for, which I can't tell you about. But, you know, it's coming. <laughs> I was about to say, there's so much stuff you're probably in that you would get in so much trouble for telling us about. <laughs> the, the, yeah, there's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, you can always find me here. I love you all, and I'll see you on my next interview. Peace.